Hello out there, it's me, Erin. If you haven't met me before, my name is Erin Holt and I'm the manager of community partnerships at Artistry. And I'm here today to offer you a little bit of quality video content as part of our Art in Place initiative at Artistry. We know how hard it is to be separated at this time. We are such a strong, a creative community and having to be physically distanced from one another is just super challenging. It makes it really hard to continue a lot of creative practice. So we wanted to offer some resources to you all so that you can continue to be creative and artistic in home and also still have opportunities to share that creativity with the rest of the world and the rest of the community at Artistry. Um, so we're starting with a drawing challenge today and it's a drawing challenge that I'm going to call the ballpoint pen challenge and I actually drew inspiration from this from a drawing uh, professor who was at my college her name was Megan Bossler and she used to hand out a couple of ballpoint pens to all of her drawing students and then they would have to do one drawing using up all of their ballpoint pens I'm just asking you to do one today. Go dig around in a junk drawer, do a little early spring cleaning and track down a ballpoint pen. But that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna use one ballpoint pen and we are gonna use up every drop of ink in that pen in order to make one drawing. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of really cool things that happen when you do this challenge. You are gonna find yourself really having to think about what kind of marks am I making? Are they gonna be more curved, more angular, back and forth, are they gonna wiggle? Uh, they seem like simple things, but as you start to get into the details of this drawing, you'll find yourself asking a lot of questions as far as what kind of marks am I gonna to wanna to make? Um, you are gonna see yourself exploring texture, line, pattern, um, shape, but most importantly, you're gonna find yourself exploring contrast. These are all fundamental elements of art. Contrast in particular can add a lot of oomph to any good work of art. And so being, uh, accepting the challenge and using this pen all up in one go is gonna make you develop really dark sections in your drawing and also leave sections really, really light. Making these commitments creatively in a, in a piece can be really challenging, but also super beneficial. And so I'm super excited to see what you all do. First off, let me just say it doesn't matter what you draw. If you like to draw flowers, if you like to draw animals, if you like to draw portraits, if you just draw patterns, abstract, surreal, totally up to you. Does not matter what kind of drawing you're gonna do. All that matters is that you commit to taking one pen and using up all of the ink inside that pen. If you accept that challenge, I think you're gonna be pretty impressed with the results. So I'm super excited to have you here. Can't wait to do a drawing with you. I don't even know what I'm gonna draw. I'm so excited about that. Uh, I guess we'll figure out when I get to my sketchbook. So we are gonna be doing a drawing together. Uh, and then I hope that you do a drawing too and share it with us so that we can see it and admire your artwork, even if we have to do it from afar. So thanks so much everybody and uh, let's get started. So I think I'm gonna start by just doing, well, should I do it this way? Yeah, let's do it this way. I tend to like compositions that go this way, but that's entirely up to you. Um, and so I think I'm gonna do kind of like a cliffside type thing. So this will be a bit of a scene. Um, so I'll do sort of a jutting cliff. And now at this point, I don't really wanna take my pen off the page, um, which can be really intimidating, uh, especially because it means that you can't go back and you're gonna end up having to make all these sort of like incidental lines that crisscross across the, the, the page, but that's okay. marks I'm making, you could call these uh, cross hatch marks. Usually you'd pick up your pen between each round, but again, we're challenging ourselves and so we're keeping our pen on the page. But as these lines interlock and go back and forth, you're gonna start seeing texture build up. So where I just start kind of do really close lines together, that's one way to make darkness, but I can also have my lines go back and forth and that's gonna build up layers of darkness back and forth. starting to look a little bit more like a rock face. So this sort of, if this stays dark here, and I can even bring this out a bit, I think I will. Um, if this stays dark here, it's gonna feel like the light might be hitting here and then casting a long shadow. And you can see the lights bouncing back and forth to create these light and dark areas. But it's gonna create this sense of an overhang on my cliff. So I'm gonna clean up this edge and make it a little bit smoother up here. Again, you don't have to draw a cliff face. <laughs> There's no reason you have to be drawing rocks if that doesn't interest you. I'm just talking a little bit about my process and the subject that I'm working on here. So I think I'm gonna try and do a lighthouse. Uh, so I'm gonna do, just I'm gonna rough this in really quick. 
And I'm going pretty lightly with my pen and I'm not being too afraid of all the marks I'm gonna make. I think we'll do a little Mansfeld. That's what that's called, right? A little man? No, Mansard? Ooh, boy. Architecture friends are gonna get mad at me. Let's try to do a little, one of those, one of those roofs with all the little extra sections to it. Um, and then I'll do kind of a tallish lighthouse here. Now, one of the things with buildings that's really kind of a challenge is this idea of getting sort of these straight lines that have the right angle to them. I've been doing this for quite a while, so I'm pretty comfortable with just sort of estimating and figure things out. Um, if you're not comfortable, I would really recommend that you look up some videos on how to do two-point perspective or three-point perspective. Um, and if you're interested in seeing a video for me, please let us know. I'd be happy to do one for you. Um, but two-point or three-point perspective is gonna give you a chance to um, really kind of hone in how your angles are working. For me, again, I have been doing this for a while. While I'm not perfect at it, uh, I'm pretty comfortable with angles at this point. And I think anybody can become pretty comfortable with, with, with angles pretty quickly. The mastering two-point perspective isn't, um, isn't too difficult. So I would really recommend if you're interested doing a little research on that or letting me know if you want to see a video. darknesses and the light right here we're probably getting a light source actually um you know our light source is actually probably somewhere like up in here the sun's probably just over here um you know because it's kind of kind of hit the top of the rock but it's coming over this rock and hitting this rock over here so that just means that i'm going to put quite a bit of shadow over here I think we've definitely got a little more to do with the water and plenty more to do with the rock, but I wanna figure out what else is going on up here in this upper section. I think I'm gonna probably do some, some clouds. We'll do a little, oh, let's do this. I always like this a little fence, just connected with some little lines. Now, right under here, it's gonna be nice and dark a whole ton of light getting off there and I'm actually gonna decide to, to, to choose an angle like this that sort of accentuate the way that the cliff is sort of broken off. challenge is to pick a random ballpoint pen 
and draw until it runs out. I chose to do a scene because that's kind of what I had in my head. I was thinking about kind of taking a journey. I felt a little cooped up lately. And so this is a nice little way to sort of imagine a place that I'm not at right now. Trees are great. Don't stress about a pine tree. Ugh, I love pine trees. It's just a little zigzag back and forth. Nothing to it. Oh boy, at this point we've been drawing for an hour. Ah, when are we gonna run out of ink? I keep thinking I'm getting close and then it just keeps going. That's part of the challenge. Wait, are we there? Let's test it. Hey, look at that. I mean, there's still a little bit coming out, but not really. We did it. Oh my gosh. It only took us whew, like an hour and 20 minutes or so. Oh boy. Well, there we go. Let's check it out. First things first, there's the pen. Got to test it. Eh, there's still a little ink out of there, but frankly, for my purposes, I'm going to call that done. Set that aside. And here we go. Big reveal. Check it out. There's our final drawing. I'll go ahead and press a little flat. Look at that. That came together so nicely. Being uh, being made through the challenge to commit to all these super dark areas provides so much nice contrast with these lights here, these light sections of the rock here, the glowing sun, or maybe moon. It does feel a little bit night nighttimey here. Um, the little light that's reflecting off the glass in the lighthouse, the light that's right along the edges of the roof. All of these things really pop because of all these darks that we had to build up just because we had to use up all that ink. We had these nice marks that we chose to make, these little rotational marks that are like the rays of the sun or the rays of the moon coming out. We have these nice deep dark hues where we built up the darks in the water there. All of these decisions were made out of necessity. We accepted the challenge. We took that ballpoint pen and we really had to use it up. And so we had to make a lot of decisions around how and where we were going to lay down our marks. And I think it was totally worth it. Uh, I hope you've had a lot of fun watching this video. And I really hope that you accept the challenge yourself and come up with your own drawing. Please, please, please share it with us. We absolutely want to see your art. Um, just because we're having to be separated like this doesn't mean we can't still be creative and still have a great sense of community. Community. So thank you so much, everybody. Really glad to offer this video, one of our first ones in this Art in Place initiative. Uh, and I can't wait to see what comes next. Hope you're all hanging in there. Uh, we're all in this together. Thanks, everybody.